So um, we're going to go ahead and start it, talking about Awasi and Awasi Igasu. Um, as most of you know, this is the third Awasi property. We started with uh, Awasi Atacama um, in the Atacama Desert in Chile, and then a couple years later opened up Awasi Patagonia in Torres del Paine. And then this is the first Awasi property that's outside of Chile um, in Argentina. So um, this is the one I think people have been most anticipated in, uh, in opening. Um, so again, today, I think most of you probably watched the video of the walkthrough of the property and the villas. Um, I'm going to do a quick overview of the villas and the property, but I'm mostly going to focus on the excursions because ultimately, I think the biggest change that's, that's happening for as travel professionals uh, for Igasu Falls is that Awasi now is <clears throat> kind of bringing a whole new paradigm to the area where people are going to be staying longer, that it's not just a fly in, stay somewhere, see the falls and leave. This is come and see the falls, but also explore the entire area around Igasu Falls. Um, starting out with, I'm going to show you a map of the location of where uh, Awasi Gasu is located. So you should see my little red pointer. Um, obviously, the star it speaks for itself. That's exactly where the property is located, but just to put it into reference, um, this is the Argentine side of the falls. Um, let me switch over to a pen and I can draw here. Um, here down here at the bottom, we have the airport on the Argentina side. Over here, we have the airport on the Brazilian side. Um, <clears throat> And then over here we have Paraguay, this is Brazil, and this is Argentina. So in terms of location, um, driving from the airport to get to Owasi, just outside of the town of Puerto Igasu, this takes about 30 minutes. And uh, driving from Owasi Igasu to get to the Argentine side of the park is the turnoff here. Um, and so it's about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes to get to the Argentine side of the park. And then also um, going over to Brazil, to the Brazilian side, this is going to take, uh, you know, 40 minutes, depending upon what happens at the border. So that's just the one thing to keep in mind. If people are going to go to the Brazilian side, you are going to have the border crossing, which is out of our control. Sometimes it can be very busy. Sometimes it's not. So this is just a little overview of where the property is located. So it's just on the border of the town of Puerto Vigasu about 25 minutes from the Argentine um, Falls Visitor Area and about 30 minutes from the Argentine Airport. Um, in terms of air access, um, I kind of listed here to let you know. So we do provide transfers in from either the Brazilian um, Foz de Gasu Airport or also the Argentine uh, Las Cataratas Airport. Um, it's interesting to look at where you can connect Igasu Falls with in other areas. Um, as far as Argentina, the majority of people are coming from Buenos Aires. Most of the flights are leaving from Aeroparque from Newberry, which is the domestic uh, airport in Buenos Aires. There also are a few select flights from the international airport at Ezeiza. So if people are flying in internationally and don't want to make that cross-town transfer, you can look at flight schedules to get them straight up to Igasu from the international airport. Uh, it's about a two-hour flight direct from Buenos Aires up to Igasu. There also are direct flights from Mendoza, from Cordoba, from Salta and Rosario. Um, so connecting some of these areas, probably Mendoza is more, one of the more popular destinations that people might be flying from and connecting an itinerary within Argentina. Um, the Brazilian side, obviously, you have a lot more options in terms of flights. And the one that I wanted to highlight, which I think is really unique, and I'd almost forgotten that they were doing this, is that um, LATAM flies from Lima. And I almost want to say this is a daily flight, but it's a direct flight from Lima to uh, the Brazilian side of Igasu Falls. So that's also something to think about as travel professionals of that if you have people in Peru and they're thinking about adding another destination, they can fly directly from Lima to the Brazilian side of the falls, tour the falls there, and then maybe fly out of Buenos Aires internationally. Um, it would make a fantastic trip, even if this is just one of the destinations that they're doing uh, in Argentina. So keep that in mind. Um, talking about weather in the area, so, you know, this is the Atlantic rainforest. It's warm and tropical most of the year. There is some variation when you're getting into May, June, July, and August is kind of the summertime there, but this shows you just an average temperature is that you really you're looking at the highs during the day of anywhere from a low of around 73 in the middle of the uh, Austral wintertime up to highs in the, in the 90s uh, there, and then also the, the low temperatures. So, Again, never gets extremely cold here, but I mean, there is quite of a variance if you're going there, say June, July, and August, it could be a, a, a bit chillier. Also behind this with the blue level is um, showing the precipitation levels. So it stays pretty consistent year round, um, but then this is also something I think about if people are asking about what the water levels are gonna be like. Um, you can look at this chart and see um, what the falls might be like. I just got back, I was there in January. Um, I think the previous times I've been there, I was in May and June. Um, 
January. It was extremely hot when I was there, extremely humid thunderstorms, but it was fantastic. And I think I've also been there during kind of the, the colder months and it was still warm and humid, not as hot and humid as it was uh, when I was just there in January, however. So going on to the property, um, I actually took this with my drone um, just to kind of show you where the property is situated. Um, it's on a huge piece of land that borders the river. Um, it's all kind of hidden. You don't really have views of the river. You're, you're really enveloped in the rainforest where the property is. This is actually from that same spot looking out towards the river. So if you went upstream to the right, um, I don't know how many miles, maybe five miles or so, you would get to the actual falls themselves. And if you follow that river downstream, you would get down to the town of Puerto Igasu and the tri-border area. But this kind of shows you where the property is located, how it's heavily forested, and how the property is, is uh, enclosed in the rainforest. Um, going in the villas, again, I was saying, try to watch the video. I'm going to send that as well in the link and the follow-up. It just really gives you a much better perspective. I think the thing is these, these villas and the lodge is so grand and so large that it's really hard um, to get a proper representation of the size of them. So we have 14 total villas. What we're looking at here is one of the standard villas. These run um, about 1,100 square feet in total, um, the standard villas. So here's a picture of the bathrooms, and then all of them have an outside patio and plunge pool as well. Um, we do, out of the 14 villas, so there's 13 like this, which are the standard villas, and they can be bedded with king bed, or they can be bedded with double beds. And in the, in the case of a triple, we can do uh, three individual beds in the villas. Um, what I don't have real pictures of at the moment are the, is the master villa. We do have one two-bedroom villa on the property. Um, that's about 1,700 square feet, and this has two bedrooms and then a central living area. And again, it's on private patio and plunge pool. So um, 13 standard villas, and then the 14th is the master villa at the property. So all of these villas are spaced out on the property. They kind of radiate out from the lodge um, on three different axes or three different lines where the villas are spaced apart so that each have good privacy between them. Um, you can easily walk from the villas um, over to the lodge if you're on one of the rows, which is further down the hill. If people don't want to walk that, there are telephones in the villas that can call up to the main lodge and they'll send the golf carts uh, down to pick up the guest. Um, but these pathways, we don't have vehicles or trucks moving on this. It's a very serene environment. So we just have these electric golf carts if people need to be moved uh, around the property. Um, in the picture of the main lodge, so this is where the bar and dining room is and common area. It's just beautifully done. Again, I'm going to send you the link to the video doing a walkthrough of this because it gives a much better feel of, of the flow of it. So again, more internal sitting areas. And then wonderful outside area. Again, it's like, you know, subtropical hot here year round. So a lot of people want to dine outside in the evening. And then we also have kind of a lounge and sitting area outside as well to sit in. Um, in terms of the culinary experience, fantastic, as all the Wasi properties. We just got news two days ago that Wasi Gatsu uh, is accepted into Relais Chateau. So this will make um, all three of the properties are members of Relais Chateau. So really incredible local cuisine at the property. Um, fantastic restaurant staff. Um, my wife's comment when we went there, she was like, wow, that's such a beautiful lodge. And it seems like you need to be beautiful to work here. Just all the staff were, were incredibly nice and friendly and good looking and just, just an incredible experience. Um, so getting into the meat of the presentation, talk about the excursions, because that's everyone's question is, okay, well, we're going to go there and now I'll watch you. You're going to do multiple nights. What are you going to do beside the falls? And the answer to that is that there's a ton to do. Um, this is my third trip I've done to the falls. The previous two, I basically flown in um, maybe late the night before. I'd spent the whole next day doing the Argentine side of the falls. And then I'd flown out. I'd never really been beyond um, just seeing the falls themselves, which is fantastic. And it's incredible. Even if you go there just to see the falls, it's, it's, it's a great experience and totally worth it. But this trip was by far the best just because I got out and saw so much in the area. And, you know, the reality is that you're going to need like, you know, three, four nights if you want to even take a bite out of what Owasi is offering here in terms of excursions. So I'm sure you guys all know, claim to fame with Owasi, very small properties. Um, we do all of the excursions are in private, um, so guests have their own private guide and they have their own private four by four during the duration of their stay, so they get to do what they want to do. They will sit down with their guide upon arrival. We have 16 full-time staff guides at Awasi Igasu, and they're fantastic. I got to meet a lot of them. Um, super experienced. A lot of them have been guiding in the area, doing a lot of kind of group tours and stuff, because that was the norm of tourism in the area. And um, now they're doing this private one-on-one -on -one with people and they're just super enthusiastic about it. They have a lot of information to share one-on-one. -on -one. So when guests arrive, they're going to sit down with the guide and they're going to talk about, um, you know, these are the options and how much time you have. This is what the weather's looking like. So let's kind of come up with a plan. And of course, since it's private and customized, if they want to change that, maybe they come back one afternoon and they say, you know what, I'm just, I just want to chill out the property and relax. They can do that um, because it's in private. 
So just as in Patagonia, if you're familiar with our excursion booklet for uh, WASI Patagonia, um, the way we break down our excursions is we talk about different areas or zones. Um, and then within those zones, we have the different excursions. So here we have it broken down basically A through E. Um, I'm gonna talk through each of these a little bit in depth. I think the main thing to think about is that basically in zone A, which is the falls, there's so much to do there that I think the majority of guests are gonna be sticking to a lot of the stuff that are there. Um, zone B, the trip to the Alto Paraná is a super highlight and that's something that even you know with a two night stay, they could sneak in there. Um, and then when we get into the C, D, and E areas, this is these are phenomenal excursions. I mean, these are going to places where you don't see any other tourists, no other tourists that come to the area go to. Um, these are going to require, you know, pretty much a full day to do. So that's where you're talking into people coming and spending, uh, you know, three or four nights at the property. So going into this, I'm going to first focus on um, zone A, which is obviously where Awasi is located and where the falls are. These are all quarter and half day excursions that are local to the hotel. You're not driving for, you know, you're barely driving 30 minutes on average to get to the different areas. And I've kind of broken them up. There's about eight things that, um, that you can do in the area. So we're going to start off talking about the falls. Um, uh, so a lot of the people had written said they had never been to Igasu um, that are on this webinar. So I want to just kind of give an overview of the park. Um, this is a bit different for Awasi. I mean, having this national park. This is a national park um, on the Argentine side of the falls where they're getting... Um, they're getting 1.6 million visitors a year. So this is a national park, it's crowded, there's a lot of people there. Um, I lost my mouse, there it is. Um, so this is looking at the Argentine side, this, in terms of the falls here, um, the falls, they, there's about 275 falls in total that make up all of what is Igasu Falls. Um, this extends basically from this side all the way over to here, that's about 1.7 miles. So it's a huge chasm that these falls are going across. Um, in terms of the breakdown, this is the border between Argentina on the right and then Brazil on the left. So 80% of the falls are on the Argentine side and 20% exist on the Brazilian side of the falls. Uh, we do provide excursions to both sides, although I think the majority of the guests are gonna kind of focusing on the Argentine side. Um, I've been to both. Um, I think the Argentine side to me is a bit more thrilling. There's a lot more to see and you're more enveloped in the falls and up close and personal. The Brazilian side to get there, um, you have this panoramic view of the falls since you're on the other bank. Um, that's unparalleled and it's really cool to see, but in terms of if someone's going and has limited time, I think just sticking with the Argentine side is the way to go. So as I talked about, this is such a heavily visited park, 1.6 million people coming to this park every year. Um, and you know, there's basically the lower and upper circuits, which are here, this yellow path and this blue path, which we're gonna look at first. So this blue path and this yellow path are the upper and lower circuits. Um, doing this whole walk, um, it'll be about a mile and a half walking to do this whole area. Um, this is best done like in half a day. Um, most people, when they just fly in to see the falls and then leave, they're generally going there, they're doing the upper and lower circuit, plus they're doing this uh, Garganta del Diablo or the Devil's Throat in one day. What's nice about with Awasi spending a couple nights there is that we, the guides like to break these up um, in doing this uh, upper and lower circuit early in the morning. So going there at around like, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and doing this complete lower walk and the upper falls walk and then trying to get out of the park by about 10.30. And for the fact being, it's just that for between basically 10 and 2, um, it's extremely, extremely busy in the park, much like Machu Picchu in a way. Um, earlier you go, we have smaller crowds in the middle of the day, it gets super, you know, packed with bus tourism. And then later in the day, um, it, it cools off. So I'm going to talk about these two different areas. So kind of the upper and lower circuit first, and then also about Garganta del Diablo, um, and how the guys like to do this and break it up. Okay. So the lower circuit, as I said, this one is kind of going to the base of the falls, um, and to the right side of the whole, um, complex of falls. So it's a series of walkways you can see up here in the right, um, kind of one of the walkways going out into the area. Um, again, mile and a half walk to do this whole circuit, takes a good half a day as well. And this, you're really getting up close and personal falls, you get soaked with the spray of it as well. And again, so this one, they always try to do in the morning and just try to do it between eight and 10.30 or something like that spend a good amount of time stopping at all of it, and then they're back to the property for a nice lunch. Um, so that takes up a morning. And then we're gonna talk about the other area, which is the, um, 
the devil's throat out here where you walk right out to like one of the biggest, most voluminous portion of the falls. To get here, um, actually from the visitor center, there's a small train that you ride and takes you out here. And this is on a schedule. They leave, I don't know, every 30 minutes or so. You get out to the Gargante del Diablo station and then you've got a walk of about three quarters of a mile to get out to this viewpoint. And again, this can get super busy. So the way that Awasi likes to do this, again, breaking the falls up, kind of not doing it all in one day, but uh, I mean, you can do it in one day. You can do the upper and lower in the morning, and then you can do Garganza del Diablo in the afternoon. But what they try to do when they take guests over here to the uh, Garganza del Diablo is do this kind of late in the day. So they'll generally take like the last train, which is leaving at about 3.30 or four o'clock, get to the station, walk out, and then you'll be there um, for a good amount of time at Garganza del Diablo before they close the park and have everybody leave. And that's really one of the best times to avoid crowds and uh, having that area more to yourself. So that's a little train that takes you out. You can walk from the visitor center out if they want to do that. Um, I really wouldn't advise that just because there's so many other cool walks that Awasi does. Um, but these trails in the park are, are pretty busy. Again, this is a three quarter mile walkway to get out to the Devil's Throat, Garganta del Diablo. Um, absolute highlight. I mean, you're standing right here and the, the quantity of water that's going over these falls is absolutely breathtaking. I mean, you can you can hear and feel this from, from a mile away as you're walking out there and it just intensifies as you're going out. So again, try to break that up and do that in an afternoon. Um, big question about Brazil. So great thing that just happened really coincided with the opening of Awasi Gasu is that Brazil has now changed their visa program for visitors. Uh, you used to have US citizens, uh, Canadians, Australians, and Japanese used to have to go to a Brazilian consulate or embassy, take all your paperwork, apply, give them your passport, wait for your passport to come back with a visa in it. They just initiated uh, just basically a month ago, this electronic visa program. So um, you can do this process online before the trip. It takes about five days, costs about $45. Um, and here's the web link there, it's vsfglobal.com. Um, so you can just do this all online and you'll get your electronic visa within about five days. It'll be good for two years. So if you do have guests that are coming that are either flying into the Brazilian side or that want to go and visit the Brazilian side, you're gonna need to take care of this for them before uh, they come, but this is a great addition. And this really only applies to US, Canadian, Australian, and Japanese to have this access to the electronic visa deal. Um, so talking about the other excursions that we have that are really close to the hotel, um, this is the, tri the tri-border area. And what we do, this is a, like one of the most fantastic excursions when the people arrive, say they're arriving one, two, three o'clock flights into the airport, they'll take them to the property, get checked in, maybe have a bite to eat, and then the guide will take them to this triple boarding area. This really sets the scene. It's pretty cool. Um, we take people out um, on these boats to kind of navigate around uh, the tri-border area. So what you're looking at here, over here you have Brazil, over here you have Paraguay, and then just off the screen down here is the Argentine side, which I didn't capture in, in this picture, but it's pretty spectacular. There's not many places in the world where you can stand. You can look at three countries. Um, each of the countries has what's called like a hito or a monument. This is the Brazilian one. You can see green and yellow on that side, the Paraguayan side. They have um, one that is red, white, and blue, and then blue and white for Argentina. So it's pretty cool. Kind of set the stage. Here you are um, seeing the size of these rivers here to realize that, you know, the falls is in this big drainage area. Um, so that's a great little half-day excursion, and that's mostly done the day that people arrive, um, or can be the morning they leave uh, as well. So that's a great excursion. Uh, we also work with the local Guarani village. I mean, all these names here are Guarani. This is an area where the indigenous people of the Guarani have lived for thousands of years. And unfortunately, not many people, most people go to the falls. They don't really realize this aspect. I mean, they might see some handicrafts and some Guarani that are performing within the park. Um, really just down the road, about 10 minutes from where Awasi is located, we, there's one particular village we're working with. And uh, this fellow is named Karai, and he's the village uh, chief, super, super cool guy. Um, you know, like I said, 10 minute drive, and then you can spend 30 minutes to a couple hours in this community walking around with Karai. And he's really real and just kind of talks about, you know, what life was like growing up and how life has changed for them and how they managed to maintain their, their traditions nowadays. Um, you know, stories of that he was told by his, you know, grandparents and like, he's just a really, really uh, well-spoken, articulate guy. Obviously, you're there with your guide who's translating from Spanish to English for the guest as well. But, you know, whenever I go to do these community visits, I always worry they're going to be a bit kind of cheesy and, and uncomfortable. But this was super well done. I mean, Oasi's worked with this community and kind of understanding what visitors want to learn about and, and see. He walks you all through, shows you the school, talks about how they got funding for the school, shows how they make all these different traps. Um, for trapping wildlife, takes you walk you through their farm to show all of the manioc and crops that they're growing. 
who come back to the village. Generally, the kids sing a song, beautiful singers. Um, and then, they, of course, they have handicrafts there for people to purchase. So this is also a good thing, kind of a last thing, if people want to stock up on some cool local handicrafts before they leave. But overall, it's a really impactful visit. Um, visiting this community. So I think that's a must on most people's trips. And again, you can do the falls in the morning, do this in the afternoon, vice versa, throw this in somewhere on the trip. It's a great experience. Um, also nearby, they have an animal rescue center. Um, and this is really cool as well. Again, I thought this was going to be kind of sad, but it's not, they're not cannibal, uh, animals in captivity. These are all animals that have been like displaced from, you know, development, or they've been animals that have been found in the park that have been injured or captured. Um, and they're brought here to be rehabilitated and released. So there's tons of different bird species. There's a lot of cats, like ocelots and stuff like that, that are there. They have, a, they have, they have puma cubs when I was visiting. Um, and it's really well done. It's a nonprofit organization. Um, so you get to see a lot of the wildlife that exists in the area that you maybe wouldn't see because it's hidden when you go out on excursions and really see like a positive project that they're doing. So again, that's a great little quarter day excursion in the area as well. There's also wonderful walks just in the local area. So if people want to go do some like bird watching, um, you have the, the Masuko path, which is actually in Igasu National Park and takes you out to this waterfall. Um, you can't swim in this, but at least gives you a destination to get out to this waterfall and do some birding along the way. It's a bit more heavily trafficked. And then we also have a whole network of trails on the Owasi uh, private reserve right there on the property. So if people maybe, you know, want to chill out in the afternoon, but do something, maybe one of them's really into birding, they can go out with one of the guides and walk through the trails at Owasi and, and do some naturalist stuff there. Going on to, so those, that's a lot there like that you can do. If you're doing two nights or something, you're going to kind of fill people's schedule just with that. Going into the other excursion, this is the one, the Alto Paraná excursion, which to me, I think is going to be, again, one of the most common excursions people are going to do away from the falls. Um, this is about a 45 to 50 minute drive straight south um, from Igasu to get down. If Some of you might know the area you're getting down to kind of like where Posada Puerto Bemberg is. Um, and that's where we're going to. So getting here, you would do a wonderful boat trip up the river. Awasi has their own launch there that's right by the river. So when they arrive, they're going to have the boat ready to go with kayaks, with food, with picnic stuff, everything. This boat now has, now has a great uh, shade cover on it and wasn't when I was there. But you basically get on the boat and then you motor up the Alto Paraná River. Um, what you're looking at here is going up the river and on the right side is Argentina on the left side is Paraguay. So a lot of people, that's just fantastic. Like, wow, that's Paraguay on the other side. And there are some little communities and villages you pass as you motor up the river and it's really scenic. And you don't see anybody out here. And I think that's what's so nice about this type of excursion is that you're doing the stuff around Igasu Falls where there's crowds and people and everything. And you go to an excursion like this for half a day and you're not going to see any other tourists. So you get back and you're like, wow, I just really saw something that not many other people see. Um, and then when you get back into the crowds, it kind of makes you really appreciate the, you know, how authentic it is to get away from, from main visitor track. So motoring up the river and you get this beautiful falls called Yassi. Um, and then the captain will kind of motor the boat there and you can jump out and swim in the water. Um, really, really cool. So we spent about 30 minutes here jumping in, swimming against the current. Um, and this is what's tucked up this little canyon to get to. So you couldn't get to this by walking. You can only get there by boat. So we've got that. And then in the area, there's a lot of really cool tributaries and they have uh, sea kayaks there, sit on top kayaks. So if guests want to paddle, um, we can take them up and explore some of these side creeks where there's some other wonderful little falls as well. So that's a great excursion that you could do in a half a day and then you could still do like uh, Devil's Throat in the afternoon or you could do the falls in the morning and come down here in the afternoon uh, as well. And then getting into these areas, C and D, um, which is the Mata Atlantica rainforest, the Atlantic rainforest, and then all these provincial parks in the area. This is for people that really want to get super off the beaten path potentially see some amazing wildlife and really go to places that no one else visits. Why this, these areas are so fantastic is that this whole area where Igasu is located, it's called the Atlantic Rainforest and Mata Atlantica. This is one of the largest tropical rainforests outside of the Amazon in South America. Back uh, before it was starting to get cut down, it covered over 100 million acres that extended from Brazil through Paraguay and into Argentina. Um, but unfortunately, over the years, this has been the most heavily de de deforested area, particularly in Brazil. And out of that 100 million acres, there's only about 7% primary forest that's, that remains. And the largest concentration of which is in these areas of C&D, um, the Uruguay Park, um, and Yacui Reserve. So if people want to see this primary Mata Atlantica, this is the place to go. What happened because it was 100 million acres and then down to 7% is that this forest boasts like an insane level of endemic species, like 40% of the plants are endemic, 30% of the animals are endemic as well. 
just because these animals exist in this area, now they're isolated in these little islands of forest of what remains. So this will generally be, I mean, there would be a big half day, but I think a lot of these excursions, you combine a lot of the visitor attractions by doing a full day from the property. So kind of talk through some of this. One to get over there. So this is uh, just past the main entrance to where the falls are is the, this road called Route 101 that cuts across um, that cuts across Igasu National Park. Most people think the National Park is just the falls, but the actual Igasu National Park, it covers about 170,000 acres. And this road cuts right through the middle of it. We were there right after a big rainstorm. I took this picture of our vehicle coming through. So it's kind of a super fun adventure, the super red earth, um, a lot of puddles to splash through in the four wheel drive. So it's a good adventure just getting over to this area as well. If people don't wanna drive dirt roads, there's actually a more paved road that they can take over to this area, but it's, it's quite a fun adventure and the vehicles are, are, are up for it. So it's a good way to do it. Um, getting over to the Yaku'i Reserve, this is the main area where we have fantastic walks and we also have kayaks there as well to explore the reserve. So if people wanna do it by foot or they wanna do it by kayak with their guide, um, fantastic area to explore um, as a full day and see some incredible bird life and possibly some larger animals as well. And just learn, learn a lot about the endemic species of plants that exist in this area. Um, there's also good waterfalls over there called Encantado or Enchanted Falls, which makes a great hike um, to get out to these falls as well. So if people want to do some natural stuff but end up at a cool destination, this is one good hike to choose in, in the reserve. There's also the ranger station that we stop at. And not far from the ranger station, there is a, um, like a salt lick, a natural salt lick. And the most common mammals that are seen there are tapir. So that's something if people want to try their hand um, to see tapir, that's a great place to stop at the ranger station and go out and spend some time sitting at the overlook of the lick and see if uh, tapirs are showing up. So we've got that. And then also this area where it's not national park, that area where the CND areas of excursions around a town called Andresito is one of the largest yerba mate growing areas in Argentina. Um, and you know, I, for most visitors, it's phenomenal. I mean, you get around this whole mate culture in Argentina where every Argentine is walking around with their thermos and their, their mate and their bombilla and sitting mate all day long. And especially you see the Argentine visitors at the park. It's quite fascinating. You go over to this area and we go and visit one of the yerba mate plantations there to see, learn about you know, the growth of it, learn about the nutrients in this plant, um, drink some mate and just kind of learn about its culture. So that can also be tied in where they can go over to this area do a cool adventure in the outdoors, but then also visit a village and visit a Yerba Mate plantation and learn about that whole process. So really fascinating kind of cultural um, thing to tie into those excursions out there. So that was a little bit of overview of CND. That was just showing you a couple of the ideas, but they have a ton of different excursions to do in this area. Um, the next thing is also the mission. So this is heading all the way south, almost down towards Posadas. This is the longest. This would take a full day to get down to these missions, um, but super well worth it if people are really into history and they're into art and architecture. It's worth the drive down there. So it does take about three hours from uh, where Obasi is located to get down to this area. It's paved road. It's straight. It's super easy drive. Um, and when you get down this area, I mean, there's something like 14 different missions that were built in the 16th and 17th century. Um, but there's three main ones that we visit, which is San Ignacio Minis, Nuestra Señora de Loreto, and Santa Ana. Um, and what's amazing about these is that, I mean, this, the, the Jesuit missionaries came from Spain to uh, convert the local Guarani tribes to Christianity. They built these, and the extent of them is incredible. I mean, they were talking that they were brought here, like, uh, I don't know, 400 tribes were brought here at a time. Um, so this is a village that had thousands of people living at these different missions. And what's cool about them is that all the stonework, so you have a lot of this kind of uh, European uh, pillars and columns, but they actually got all the Guarani to do the artwork. So when you look into the relief and all the drawings that you find in the stone, there's a lot of symbolism from the Guarani of, you know, spirits and animals and stuff that are incorporated in here. So again, this area, you know, this was the big story. They made the whole movie about the mission in this area when the Jesuits came and colonized all this. And what was crazy is that this was like, you know, these missions with thousands of people in the middle of the jungle in the 1600s and 1700s that were here. And then like in 1767, the Spanish threw the Jesuits out and these were completely abandoned and were just overgrown um, by rainforest. So um, a really cool thing if people do have a full day, you can add this on here. So that was kind of a deep dive into excursion options. And just to show you, again, if you're looking at if people are going to do two nights, three nights or four nights here, I just off the top of my head lay this out of thinking about what could be some possible combinations to really show you how if you want to fit in some of these longer excursions, you're going to need to have people spend three or four nights here 
um, at Awasigasu in order to to do them. So I'm not going to talk through all of that. I'll send you this afterwards. You can have a look at it. And again, everything in Awasi is like customized and private, so we can make any type of combination for guests here. But just to show you, you know, if you do want to do the main parts of the falls broken up over two days and some stuff local, but add a full day excursion, it just shows that you're going to need three or four nights to stay here at the property. Um, Rates. Um, so basically to break it down, it pretty much breaks down somewhere around $1,000 per person per night. Um, at Awasi, which is in line with uh, with the other Awasi properties as well. I'm going to send you a copy of these rates afterwards as well. Um, also, keep in mind that we do offer promotions if you're combining different Awasi properties. So if you're combining Awasi uh, Atacama with Patagonia or Patagonia with uh, Igasu or all three together, um, the more you combine them, either in a seven-night program or a 10-night program, then uh, you'll get discounts. And then we also provide the hotel nights in Santiago and in Buenos Aires in order to make the connections between there. So take advantage of those promotions. Also, I know a lot of you come to my website um, to get marketing materials and uh, image galleries and the like. Um, I'm still, I'm actually building out that page for Awasi Yigasu on my site today. So um, basically next week it'll be live and you can get everything that you want off of my site. But Awasi does have a travel trade, which is uh, just awasi.info rather than awasi.com. And then there you're gonna find links to download the videos, you know, the rates, the fact sheets, uh, excursion booklets, everything there. Um, so that was it. Hope we got you guys fired up about selling uh, Wasi Gasu. This completely changes the visitor experience um, in the area. So much to do. I mean, I went this last trip, I went basically just to go to Igasu. My wife and I flew down to Buenos Aires. We spent a night. We went up and spent four nights at Igasu Falls. And then one night in Buenos Aires and back. It was like a one, it was a weekend to weekend trip. And it was awesome like i would do it again um, the falls is worth just even its own trip but again don't think of you know uh the falls as simply just a day trip on an argentine itinerary start thinking about it as also just a destination itself you can combine it with peru you can combine it with other destinations because of the air access and there's a lot to do so people can spend multiple days there so that is it um and again if anybody has any questions about any of the other properties in south america i'm always available for you um also uh my colleague Kristen is going to be talking doing a webinar uh, in a couple weeks on the new properties that we're representing in Central America that she's overseeing. So uh, try to tune into that. These places are super, super cool. And um, that's it. So I'm going to leave the screen on for a minute. As I said, I'm not going to do a traditional question and answer session. Go ahead and put your questions into the chat pane of the webinar. I'm going to leave this running for the next five minutes or so. And then once I finish this, I'm going to take all the questions, put them into a Google Doc. I'll answer each of them in writing, and then I'm going to send you guys a follow-up with a link to the recorded webinar, all the sales and marketing links for Owasi Gasu, and a page with all the questions 